at a carbide cannon that I made. The last one I made was more than 50 years ago, and that ended in an accident, so I'll share some safety around carbide cannons with you. In order to make this one, what I did is I um, purchased galvanized piping. This is a one inch by eight inches long galvanized pipe threaded at both ends. Over here, I have a one and a half inch galvanized pipe that is five inches long, threaded at both ends. In the middle, I have a reducer that goes from one and a half inch down to one inch. And just to make it look nice, it's only for ornamental purposes. At the end, I put a PVC one inch coupler that is threaded on the inside on both sides. Spray painted that black spray painted this with primer gray, primer gray, primer gray. And at the end here you can see I threaded on a one and a half inch threaded on both sides coupler. And then finally on the end I have a plug and I'll show you how that is used. The woodworking involved here, if I spin this around, you can see I made a wooden collar and with a, a jigsaw I cut a circle and I cut the circle just right so I could fit this reducer in there, shove the reducer in, and use two part epoxy glue to glue this in. I drilled holes, 3 8 inch holes coming in on this collar from both sides. And then you can see right here, I cut a piece of oak. You can use any wood you want, almost like a toilet paper dispenser another matching piece here and then I drove or drilled a hole 3 8 inch hole through this end piece and this end piece inserted a 3 8 inch piece of aluminum rod and it goes through and it goes about oh I'd say three quarter of an inch deep into this bracket that holds the cannon itself on the end, this is just ornamental. I turned some little knobs to put on here and they just have 3 8 inch holes drilled in them and they're capping off. How did I connect this? If we take a look underneath, you can see I countersunk some screw holes and I simply drove screws in on both of these standards that hold it up. Now if I flip it this way you can see at the end I have this pipe cap but if we take a look inside I can unscrew this and what I have inside of this I took some more of that 3 8 inch rod and just pounded it with a ball peen hammer and made a little bit of a spoon at the end and then in here I put some two-part epoxy putty and put it around here, stuck that rod in there, and you can see it's in there for good. Now, in order to make this work, you don't need very much of this carbide. By the way, if you're purchasing carbide, I would recommend this man. He was really good to me. Uh, it's at CheapCarbide.com, and I think I paid about $10 for this. Uh, pretty good size five ounce container. Notice I have this sealed in here good and tight. I don't want any moisture getting in here. And then I have a second one that I'm going to be opening and closing a lot and I'll only ruin a little bit if I ruin it with moisture. So watch and take a look at how much I use. Problem you might run into is using too much of this. So I'm going to take and put just a small amount of granules on here. There it is. I can't tell you how much that is. You might have to experiment a little bit with it. But if you watch what I do now, I insert this into the container and then I turn. And as I turn, the carbide falls off and it falls into the base of the cannon. Now I rotate this around and I have a little eyedropper and I can squirt water out and I'll squirt it in the top hole here. I hear fizzing inside, almost like an Alka-Seltzer tablet's in there, and I'll count two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, and let's see if we get a, a report out of this. And you can see that was a successful pop. Now, some of the safety involved here, you have to be careful because you can get a flame out from here and you can burn yourself with your hand over it. And what often happens is if you put too much carbide in, this is going to fill up with acetylene gas and there won't be enough oxygen in there. So as the acetylene slowly leaks out, you will get a tiny flame right here. That tiny flame is just waiting for oxygen. And if there's anything that causes oxygen to enter here, or if you just kind of open this up and allow oxygen to come in, you're going to get an explosion. So you need to be really careful with it. If you don't get it igniting and it doesn't pop on you, then you're going to have to give it some time to wait or use some kind of an air uh, pump device to blow air in here and blow it out. Do not blow it with your mouth, as I saw someone doing on the internet, because you can get a flame out and get yourself in a lot of trouble. Now you can see all I need to do is take this and unscrew it. I'll set it in a horizontal position. And when I unscrew it, you can see, there it is, it's not even wet. Now there's a little bit of wet on it. I want to dry it off good here on my pants. And then I'm ready for another shot. Probably after four or five shots, I'll need to rinse out this can in here because it's going to get dampness inside of it, a lot of crud, and I'll have to do it again. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Be really careful as you use this and have some fun making these. Don't let children use these unattended because they're going to do all kinds of stuff. They're going to start putting uh, pieces of clay in there, balls, and then next you've got rocks, and pretty soon they're going to shoot something that could kill someone. So this is never to be used by unsupervised children. I know. How do I know that? I used to be an unsupervised child, and I know what happened to me. So you want to supervise children with this and uh, use it safely and use an extension lighter like this. No little match here so you don't get a flare-up getting you. I hope you enjoyed that and see if you can build one and give me a comment if uh, you have some success with it. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.